Athens, Sparta, Alexandria, Rome, the ancient cities on which our modern civilization was forged. Here in Cambridge, centuries of accumulating artifacts and texts have made this the most prestigious hub for studying classics in the country. But in our increasingly modern society, how much can we learn from the ancients? Have we learned all there is to learn? And can their ancient customs be in any way compared to our modern society? These are all questions that I will be attempting to unravel. Join me, Tristan Marshall, as I explore how the classical world is still impacting on our lives. Cambridge's grand old colleges and science labs have become known the world over, but one feature which is sometimes overlooked is that it has the best classics department in the country, making this the perfect place to discuss the relevance of the ancient world. I'll be talking to students and academics to find out their views on the classical world and its impacts on modern life. But before we do that, is it fair to look at classics purely as a subject to be taken at university? Who else benefits from the study of classics? And how can it help you get a job if you're not looking at a career in a university? Well, to find out, I've come to the Museum of Classical Archaeology. Now, many of these statues aren't actually as old as they look. They are, in fact, casts from the 19th and 20th centuries. But what I'm going to do today is have a look at what are by far the most recent exhibits here. This is a cut paper artwork by artist Vanessa Stone and as you can see it has taken direct influence from the statues that you can see around us. The Roman figure is very characteristic of the classical statues. So this is a direct example of the classical world influencing not only university academics but also the arts. To find out more, I went to Vanessa's studio to ask her how ancient art has influenced her unbelievable collages. Can you tell us what it is about classical statues that inspired you to make your collages? Uh, the thing about classical collage, um, sculptures is they're very uh, clean and streamlined. So it's very easy to look at them and think that they naturally go with the medium that I work with. Um, they're just very beautiful, so I wanted to capture some of that in, in paper um, and really have a dialogue between the beauty of the sca statues and a, a different kind of medium. So are there any statues in particular that inspired your work? Uh, a lot of the goddesses I really loved, but, but really it's not the famous ones, it's the ones kind of tucked around the corner um, that I think are quite interesting because they're often a bit more quirky. Um, and unnoticed, and I quite like the fact that I'm working from something that's a little bit in the shadows. From your experience, are many artists inspired by classical art? I think there's quite a few, and um, certainly classical art would have been used absolutely fundamentally in art school to draw from. Uh, plaster casts would have been available for students to work from instead of life models. So it, uh, classical art and sculptures have actually been embedded in artist experience. Um, and I think actually artists do look to them quite a bit because they're such refined pieces of art. It gives you great lessons in composition and shape and balance. So did you use them whilst you were um, learning your trade at art school then? I did. I, I did a, a design degree, but I certainly always, uh, the, my love of anything classical has gone back a long time. So um, that with classical architecture as well. I just love the, sh the shapes and the, just the sense of balance and stillness really. So can you tell us a bit about the creative process from when you first come up with an idea to a finished collage like this one? I spend quite a bit of time at the place that I'm going to draw, so um, certainly at the museum then I spent lots of time just sitting and looking, that's actually all I wanted to do, and just absorbing. So then I spend time in the museum and then I start drawing. 
Um, and these are the kind of drawings that I tend to do. This was based on a youth, uh, just a youth with curly hair. Um, and so I just do drawings. I'm only looking at lines. I'm only looking at the structure of the actual sculpture because I'm not ca capturing uh, light and shade. It's just shape. And from that, I then transfer it onto a piece of paper. So like this, I actually transfer it onto a piece of paper and cut it from a single sheet. And then I cut very delicately, capturing kind of the, the profile and little parts of the body. And then from that, I lay paper from behind, which then go on to something like this, these kind of collages where there's paper I've stuck from behind and cut away. Now, is there a dream gallery that you'd really, really love your work to be shown in? Well, in Cambridge, I would be over the moon if ever my work was at Kettle's Yard because it's such a beautiful house. Yes, I, I dream of that. I don't know whether I'd ever get to that, but it would be amazing, yes. Thank you very much for talking to us. That's all right, it's a pleasure. So we've spoken to Vanessa about how her art is influenced by ancient sculptures. But what do the academics and the students that study it think? What are they in it for? Well, to find out, I went to the Oxbridge Classical Open Day so I could ask them about their thoughts myself. I'm Oliver. I'm from Oxford and I study classical archaeology and ancient history. I essentially just very much enjoyed old things. I enjoyed going to museums. Um, I did some work on an archaeological dig um, while I was still at school. Um, I enjoyed reading ancient history, studying Latin at school, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's what really encouraged me to, uh, to apply. I, I'd say that archaeology is something that everyone should get involved in. It's, it's very hands-on, very practical, very exciting. Um, my, remember on my first dig I found a, an ancient Roman ear scoop uh, and this is an, at, a, at a bathhouse in Sussex and this is an exciting memory that has sort of stuck with me forever. Um, so I, I, there are all sorts of opportunities to get involved with the Council of British Archaeology and, and this kind of thing. I'm one of a number of student helpers who has come from Oxford for the day. Um, we're here to talk to prospective applicants about some of the courses that Oxford offers, um, including straight classics, but also um, classical archaeology um, like I do, and uh, ancient and modern history as well, to give them a feel for the admissions process, what they might be studying, uh, and what it's like generally to be in Oxford. I'm Shahab Bassett, and I'm uh, studying Latin, Greek, RS and politics at A-level. I think the fact that our, the whole base of our culture is in classics and our language is based in classics, I think to understand ourselves we have to understand our language and our past and I think classics allow you to explore the philosophy behind our cultures I think that's really what I find really interesting about classics. I actually want to go into politics um, and I think a degree in classics would help me understand society and I think society is a key part of becoming a politician because if you don't understand society you can never make any sign of difference. I like to look at what, what I think the university can provide me. And I think Cambridge is very rich in its culture. And I think it's very, and it's, very, it's very well respected in terms of its classics. I mean, it's arguably one of the best classics courses in the country, that and Oxford. And I think both places offer, allow you to um, delve into the language in a way other places do. To get myself an academic perspective, I spoke to Robin Osborne, Professor of Ancient History at Cambridge. Professor Osborne, what do you think it is about classics that keeps on drawing people back year after year? I think it's partly that the texts that we reference and the objects that we discuss have themselves become so much the foundations for both the whole history of Western art, the whole history of Western philosophy, the shape of Western literature, that in studying these texts, one feels one discovers more, not just about an ancient world, but about the world that's been built on that, and that our world. So, um, in what specific ways has the ancient world influenced um, our modern society then? The list's pretty long. <laughs> uh, so, it's a question of where you might want to start, as it were. You might start. Um, with the female nude, right? Um, that our whole way of thinking about both male and female beauty has been shaped by what happened with Greek sculpture in the 5th and the 4th century. Or you can start with issues of philosophy, 
basic philosophical steps are first explicitly made by the Greeks. Or you can start with how we do history. One of the things that is never going to change is the past. <laughs> and given our foundational position, it's always going to be important to go back to things classical in order to understand um, what has been created since. So what advice would you give to a student who has never before studied the classics who wants to take it as a degree level? Uh, immerse yourself in ancient texts, immerse yourself in ancient art. If you can, go visit. Um, there's nothing like actually experiencing the ancient world through the words and the objects that make it up as far as we're concerned. Looking at all the artefacts left behind by the ancients, it's easy to feel a bit disconnected. After all, these people lived so long ago, how can we possibly draw any parallels between their world and our own? Well now I hope it's as clear to you as it is to me. The ancients are still all around us, influencing our art, our language and even our attitudes. The classical world speaks through us and that is why we must ensure that they are never forgotten.